we all need to pray that we we'll grow our loving kindness and compassion towards all sending me. Because the, here, Datu, Datu, Stuba means symbolic of love and wisdom. Pray like that. Don't pray selfishly. If you apply loving kindness and wisdom, then your dukkha will end. Right, right. Otherwise, wherever you rebirth, you will never get uh, sukha. sukha. Don't make desire. Ah, so this is first. This is first. Suffering, cause of suffering. No, cause of suffering is what? Pleasure. Pleasure, attachment, anger, ignorance. In this area, also these statues under there's Buddha's relics. When I was young time, was for first time, baby time. Since then, I I got darshan many times. Also, when I came with groups, and so see not see same. So you all pray in the, under this. There's a Buddha's relics. So what you need to pray is more peace. <coughs> And also you need to pray, pray. Your inner loving kindness and wisdom need to develop. So there is what we pray, we want to be like you. How you help, how you serve to other, how you kind, how you teach to other, we like to follow you, your footsteps. So please bless us. Okay? Think that. I will say a few words because we call Dharmic connection in holy place. So I give talks where in Bodh Gaya. Uh, now we are going to where Buddha born. So what Buddha taught? First he enlightened where in Bodh Gaya. In Bodh Gaya. What he said, Sabshi Dodo Lorosan, do much is, do sit up, Chushi Koyi, Sula, Tenjo Ko, Minjuri, Nenananda, Nijo, never chas. Is it profound, peaceful, luminously clear, and uncompounded? I have discovered a nectar like Dharma. Whoever I teach it to will not understand, so I shall remain quiet in the forest. Then, Brahma and Vishnu and many others asked him to give teaching. So Buddha came here in Varanasi, and we call it Varanasi Transon Lunga Redajina. Yul Varanasi Transon Lunga Redajina Tu. Dumbanyami Shaji Tube. But then, having <coughs> been requested by the great gods Brahma and Indra, um, the Buddha proceeded to this place, the um, deer park, uh, in the forest of the falling sages. And there he was uh, received by the excellent retinue of the five. But along uh, and uh, at that site, he then turned the wheel of Dharma on the four noble truths to a retinue that included not just these five, but also um, innumerably many non-human beings and gods. And um, in this way, he turned the wheel of Dharma beginning with the um, uh, simply saying dukkha, which means suffering. So the Buddha pointed out to the fact of suffering, which uh, is always a fact if we are uh, confined to samsaric existence. If wherever we may be and wherever we may go within samsara, it's always painful. There's never a way of escaping the all conditioned uh, pain of the all uh, pervasive pain of conditioned existence and in relation to that there is also the uh, suffering of change and the suffering of suffering so samsara is an expense of pain and that's what the buddha uh, pointed out and that this uh, samsaric pain of existence is uh, will is felt by 
by all sentient beings. And that is because wherever there is ordinary consciousness, there's ca disturbing emotions. And wherever there is uh, disturbing emotion, there will be karmic actions. And so disturbing emotion and karma creates a number of experiences that uh, always bear the mark of suffering, whether they manifest as pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral sens sensations. There's never a chance of escaping suffering as long as the mind remains under the power of um, the negative emotions. So in order, uh, this is then something that is uh, very important to become clear about, that wherever we go in samsaric existence, it, it is an expense of, of suffering. But uh, when we also there uh, become clear about what it is that creates this suffering, what it is that causes it, then uh, it is not then the kind of sadness and the kind of um, disenchantment with samsaric existence that arises in the mind is going to be a very productive one. Because naturally, when, when we know about suffering and when we know what causes suffering, we will do whatever we can to um, get rid of those causes of suffering. And so uh, the Buddha also taught what it is that um, brings about this dissolving of karma and disturbing emotions. And so uh, liberation from the entire framework of the three realms, samsaric existence and full awakening. He taught at length on the truth of the path and on the cessation of great peace that is achieved um, through the applied path. So in other words, the truth of uh, cessation. Uh, so this, um, this teaching of the Four Noble Truths uh, was given for the first time here at this uh, sacred site at Saranath. And uh, the Four Noble Truths are obviously central to the Buddha Dharma. And this also is the reason why uh, the teaching of the Four Noble Truths, uh, the simple enumeration of the Four Noble Truths has become so well known in the world so that uh, most people, also those who aren't Buddhists, they know uh, the Four Truths. But uh, obviously not all, everyone who knows of the Four Truths become Buddhists and it's only some who, uh, among those who, are, who have heard of the Four Truths who uh, commit themselves to the Buddhist path and the Buddhist religion. Even among those, it's few uh, less still who uh, really study what these four truths come down to. And among those who become conceptually clear about the four truths, uh, it's not everyone who uh, practices um, in accord with them. And among the practitioners, there are also numerous, uh, there are many different ways of practicing, and not everyone practices fully and wholeheartedly in the authentic way. And so it's not everyone who is uh, liberated and right away. Uh, so we can say among those who commit themselves to the teachings of the Four Noble Truths, there are differences. For some, uh, liberation is just uh, one step away. For, for others, it's a matter of more time. And for others, again, there are some lifetimes involved in before the attainment of, uh, of liberation.